Welcome back to Calculus 2! Today we're going to continue our study of differential equations. We're going to be looking at first order differential equations throughout this continued differential equations unit. And we're going to start off by doing a what should be a pretty short video. I know I say that, but I think this will be. Uh, we're going to talk just about vector and slope fields. Now, uh, these are drawings of differential equations. Now, a differential equation is literally an equation that involves a differential or a derivative. It always has the derivative as a term in the equation, or in a term in the equation. First order differential equations have the first derivative in them somewhere. Vector and slope fields. I made a note to review solving them there. Let's just solve a really simple one. For example, f prime, or let's let's just use y prime. Y prime equals x. Super simple. Then y, you could just solve this by integration. Pretty simple to solve. One half x squared. Because remember, this is dy dx equals x. So. To separate variables is easy, you just move the dx over, integrate the left, you get y, integrate the right, you get x squared. Now you might say this is only one solution. Well, technically I left something out, plus c. Because of that, there's an infinite number of solutions. If you want a differential equation to have a single solution, a single function as a solution, generally you have to have an initial value. But Everything of this form is a solution of this equation. There's an infinite number of them, so a vector slope field is a drawing of all of them, or at least is meant to indicate all of them. It's a bit like drawing a graph of just an equation it indicates some of the points, but not all of the points, but it indicates their trends. So this is just how it works, and it, it's fairly simple how you do the graph. I mean, like if I did y prime equal x, right? Well, if you look at what the slope field would look like, I, rarely ever do you do a slope field by hand, but I'll do a very small one here, just to show you how it's being calculated. So y prime is x, so at x equal one, y, is, y prime is one. Now that's the slope. So what you would do is you would draw a little line segment with an arrow that has a slope of about one. And everything at x equal 1 would have a slope like that. Man, I'm not drawing this well, but you know. We'll look at a good one here in a second. That's why I have a link there, which I will put in the description of the video if you want something to click. But in any case, everything along x equal 1 would have a slope of 1. x equals 0, they'd be flat. They would be flat. They would be flat. And x equal negative 1, they would have a slope of negative 1. So you have all of these slope fields or vector fields that tell you how the function's behaving. And if you think about this, it's not that surprising because the s solutions are all parabolas. So sure, they're going down, they flatten out, and then they curl back up. That's how they work. So let's go to this website. I already brought it up. You can do vectors in a variety of different mathematical applications, but I found this nice GeoGebra app from Dr. Adrian Janetta, and it lets you set pretty self-explanatory settings. You can set what your differential equation is, so let's go ahead and graph f prime x, y equal x, and let's go, sure, negative 5 to 5. Then, what is this green thing? Well, what this is, is we plotted a solution. You don't have to have one. You can delete it. That's just there. And you can turn it off and on. So, the thing is, depending upon where you start your solution, is depending on which solution it's going to be. Because we saw there's an infinite number of solutions. Certainly, if we click, pick a point down there, and just drag this down here, that's our point, then it's that parabola. You know, it just moves up if we're in different places. For right here, if I did this initial value with the problem, I would get that solution. Like for example this, negative two, 2.64. So that would mean 
my differential equation is f prime of xy equal x. We already saw the solution was y equal one half x squared plus c. But the, the initial value they would have given us to actually get us this would be y of negative two equal 2.64. Plug that in, negative two in for x, one half times negative two squared, 2.64 plus c. That would be four, so you get a two, four over two is two, plus c. So your c in this case would be 0.64. And that would be our specific solution. One half x squared plus 0.64. And look at it. The center is right at about 0.64 up. It's probably actually a little bit higher than that, but I think that's just because of the round off. So yeah, uh, one of the things some of the early problems in the homework have you do is try and just plot a few solution curves. So if I were just drawing my own, let's put a let's put a different differential equation there in there. Let's say negative x over y. If I were drawing something in here, you can see this is moving the point around cause for some very strange things. That's actually some errors in how it's working, I think. I think if I were actually just drawing this based on it, I would probably just think this is pretty much going to be a circle. Because you have that, that tells you to level off, level off, come back down, come back down. I think you're probably going to get about a circle there. We could actually solve this and see. Shouldn't be too hard to do that. If y prime e or dy dx, I guess, we'll separate variables. dy dx is negative x over y. Oh yeah, that's not hard to separate. Uh, you get y dy equal a negative x dx. So one half y squared equal one half x squared plus c. So then multiply everything by two. Oh, I forgot the negative. My bad. Uh, you get y squared equal x squared, negative x squared, plus a different constant. I'll just call it c1. So you get x squared plus y squared equal c1. And that's, that's just the limitation of this particular app. But yeah, you can see that is the formula for a circle centered at the origin. So yeah, the solutions of these should be circles. And that's really all I wanted to talk about for this video. So, like I said, pretty short. The next thing we're going to do is going to take a little bit longer. So, Next time we'll look at Euler's method, which is a method for approximating solutions of differential equations. It's basically doing what we were doing graphically there and drawing a solution based on the vector field, only we're using the, the equation to do it. So... We'll see you with that. Have a great life.